Today we're here with Katie Gonzalez, who is a book binding artist, and it's a very interesting art that she does. And she is owner of Linen Laden Felt. Did yes. I say that correctly? Mm -hmm. Okay. And she's going to tell us a little bit more about what that is. But um, first, Katie, I want you to talk to me a little bit about um, how you got into this, because I'm sure when you you know, went to college uh -huh. to major in graphic design, is that yes. right? That you didn't make a conscious decision to start your own bookbinding business. That's no. not what you thought you were going to end up doing. So uh, tell me how you discovered this art and how it became such a passion for you. Yeah, so um, I definitely did not um, think that I would become a bookbinder. That was not um, necessarily what the plan was. Um, but I took a bookbinding class in college um, during a study abroad semester in Cortona, Italy. And um, so I took a bookbinding and a paper making course in addition to an art history class and a painting class. And um, that, that bookbinding class just like really um, struck a chord with me and I really enjoyed it. And um, I liked the fact that I could make something um, functional. Uh -huh. uh, so like an art form that could be useful. Right. Um, so it wasn't just something that would um, you know, be displayed on a gallery wall is something that people could hold in their hands, they could touch, they could feel, they could fill it with meaningful things. Um, so to me, that just sort of became a pretty um, an interesting thing. And I, you know, I love books anyways, I like to read. So, um, you know, the book as an art form was just really fascinating to me. So, um, you know, for a long time, it was just um, a hobby of mine. Mm -hmm. um, so even after I, you know, went back to campus and started um, you know, continuing just like taking my regular classes and finishing my graphic design degree. Um, I kept trying to find ways to um, work books back into all of my projects. So like my senior thesis project for my graphic design major was to make a series of hand-bound books. So like I designed them, but then bound them. Um, so I just kind of kept trying to find ways to bring the, the books back into my work. Um, and then I was, you know, after college, I was working as a graphic designer and, you know, I liked it, but I didn't love it. And I really missed like making something tactile that you could mm -hmm. hold. Um, so um, what sort of started as a hobby sort of eventually transitioned into a business. That's really awesome. And I know one of my biggest regrets in college was not doing study abroad. So good yeah. for you for doing that because <laughs> I'm really glad that I did. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you never know what kind of passions you'll discover if you don't explore life yeah. and you don't explore the world. I spent a lot of time trying to make up for lost time. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, when you made the decision to break away from working as a graphic designer um, for a design firm to start your own full time business as mm -hmm. a bookbinder, what kind of fears did you have? Um, so I think it's important to to kind of think about the fact that like it wasn't um I didn't it was a tr transition so I didn't uh -huh. just sort of like flip the switch and like quit my job and then just you know right. decide like okay I'm gonna try this so even though um bookbinding you know was a hobby for a while I sort of gradually transitioned into um you know you know I launched an online shop and I was kind of um making books like in the evenings or on the weekends and you know it was still you know kind of a hobby at that point but um sort of with the, the end goal of eventually making it into a business. And, um, you know, it eventually got to the point where, like, um, I was selling a lot of work and having trouble kind of keeping up with the demand, which was great. Yeah. Um, so I was eventually able to um, change my work schedule from full-time to part-time. So then I sort of was working part-time as a graphic designer and then part-time working on my business. Mm -hmm. And... Um, you know, that was sort of a, a difficult thing because I had, you know, I had this full time job and I had to convince my bosses to let me yes. <laughs> uh, change my schedule. Right. And at that point, um, you know, I was a, a manager at that point. So it was, you know, not something that they were thrilled about, but I just knew that it was something that I needed to do. Yeah. Um, and I think it would have been hard to, um, you know, make that leap into like being a full-time um, independent artist. Right. Um, but right around that time that I was sort of like thinking I was, you know, ready to, to make that leap, um, my husband accepted a job in Nashville. So we moved here and I was sort of faced with the opportunity of, um, you know, taking this chance and um, 
you know, trying to, to make it work as a full-time bookbinder or um, searching for another graphic design job, which like really didn't have me excited. Yeah. So um, I was like, you know what, now's the time I have, you know, I have, I've sort of been like forced into this scenario where like I won't have a full-time job. Um, so that was sort of what pushed me into it. So, you know, there were definitely some fears about, um, you know, finances, right. you know, like, is this a, a viable career option? Um, and, you know, maybe about like what other people would think, what people understand, you know, bookbinding isn't really a, a job you hear about often. Um, and then also just, uh, you know, I went to school, I got this graphic design degree and, um, I felt like I should be using it, even though <laughs> maybe it wasn't really what I wanted to be doing. <laughs> right. So, um, with that, and <laughs> we have a little visitor with yes. us here. <laughs> Say hello, Porter. Porter. <laughs> um, he's really wanting to be part of this, this yes. interview. <laughs> um, so tell me about how your past experience prepared you for this endeavor. So in some ways I felt very prepared and then in other ways, um, <laughs> not prepared at all. <laughs> so creative, like create, um, you know, in terms of like the creative aspects of it, um, I had a really wide art background, um, and a lot of different, um, topics, yeah. you know, everything ranging from graphic design, book arts, photography, painting. Um, so in terms of like the creative side, I did feel very prepared. I'm sorry. <laughs> Wants to be in this video. <laughs> Say hello, Porter. <laughs> Porter, come here. Porter. <laughs> Porter thinks he's a lap dog. <laughs> Porter. Come here, darling. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> um, but in turn, so prepared creatively. Um, in terms of preparations for running a business, you know, I didn't really ha have any business training. So that was right. something that I did do a lot of research on and a lot of um, learning independently and then, um, you know, continuing to just kind of learn as I go. Right. So that has been, um, you know, maybe like the, the biggest learning curve was um, kind of learning the business side of things, but also mm -hmm. maybe has been a pretty satisfying part of things because it's, you know, you can't be an artist unless you're also a business person. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That's so true. Um, sorry about that. Uh, how do you, how do you think your work helps others? So um, going back to the books being a functional art form, mm -hmm. um, I really like to think about my books being used and becoming meaningful keepsakes and, um, you know, things that people might use as a, um, a wedding guest book or a vacation photo album or a baby book or um, a journal or a sketchbook or, you know, just any, you know, anything from like a, you know, a book for a very important occasion like a wedding to just sort of like a, a journal that you keep in your pocket and you jot down some notes in. Um, I think it's all just sort of preserving your life in a tangible tactile way and not, um, you know, on your phone or on your computer mm -hmm. um, and having that to look back on later on um is just you know a really important thing and i know that i use books all the time right um you know as a garden journal or um as a guest book and you know all sorts of things uh photo albums and just sort of enjoying looking at those tangible um books and i think that that sort of resonates with people especially you know when they're so used to just looking at their pictures on their phone yeah um, seeing them in a book is really nice that's so true because I used to do a lot of scrapbooking a long time ago yeah. and really need to get back into it because all of my pictures are on my phone and yeah. I need to get them into something hard copy because those are the things that you can sit down and really share with a group of people mm -hmm. and, and with family members and yeah. you always have that and you ha don't have to worry about anything becoming obsolete where you can't show those yes. pictures. Yeah. So I think that's very important. Um, you mentioned in your bio that Nashville is a city that loves to learn. What is your philosophy on lifelong learning and discovering new passions through learning? Yeah, um, I think that, well, Nashville in particular sort of has this reputation of like the Athens of the South. And yes. there are a lot of universities here, but there's also a lot of really great community education programs, which is what I'm really passionate about. So these are um, 
classes you know that are open to the public at different universities so like Watkins College or Vanderbilt have these community education programs mm -hmm. um, so you know that's sort of like one vein um, the libraries have a lot of community education classes the city has community education so um, you know sort of like bringing those two elements together obviously you have education where you're going and you're taking a class and you're learning something new but then the community aspect is something that like you know shouldn't be overlooked because it's right. really an opportunity for people to explore new passions together and to meet new people and to kind of get out of their daily routine a little bit and just try something that maybe they've been interested in but never had the mm -hmm. chance to try um so whether that's like taking a cooking class or taking a book binding class or whatever um there are just a lot of really interesting opportunities out there and i think nashville really um is you know supportive of that yeah that's so true i try to take a class at least once a quarter or yeah. once a semester. Um, I took your class yeah. last year at the Skillery, which mm -hmm. I found to be very therapeutic. Mm -hmm. Just the process of yeah. cutting the paper and just focusing on something else instead of yeah. worrying about all the other craziness that's going on yes. around me in the day. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, that was a great class. And, and I, I like to teach classes too on, yeah. on the things I know about, such as career advising, job search skills, but mm -hmm. also want to take a class at the same time. So I'm going to be taking a cooking class nice. this year. Yeah. Yeah. I need to learn to cook better. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, your, your class, I think was, um, if you like working with your hands, it's a really great class. Yeah. yeah. Um, what do you think your classes teach in addition to the art of or the skill of book binding? Yeah. So, um, I really think that, you know, the classes um, are pretty approachable, like bookbinding is like a pretty approachable art form because mm -hmm. even people who don't consider themselves to be an artist can mm -hmm. take a bookbinding class and right. leave with a really great end result. Yeah. Um, and I think a lot of people are intimidated to sign up for an art class and they think like, oh, I'm not a painter. Right. It's like you don't have to be a painter to make a book. Like it's like a yeah. totally different um, skill set and it's still very creative and hands-on. Um, but I think it's, you know, it's kind of empowering because at the end you've made this um, functional thing and I know like the first time that I ever made a book I was just like so excited I was over the moon I was like oh my gosh like I made this <laughs> and that, that's how I felt yeah. after I left your yeah. class I'm like, um, this is so cool I have this book and I made it it's yeah. mine <laughs> and then it gets you thinking about like what you might do with it like yeah. how you fill it um so I think that that's you know one of the most exciting parts about it but then the other part is again like that community aspect um so hopefully people walk away not just with you know the skills to make like one particular type of book but also um you know a wider exposure to the art community here in town um in general and mm -hmm. maybe the encouragement to you know keep trying new things whether it's book binding or a different art form yeah, uh, yeah. that's great so um what are some of your other passions outside of your work and how do you pursue those passions so um in recent years, I've become really interested in um, gardening and cooking, uh -huh. um, which are two things that I never thought that I would be interested yeah. in. Um, but in terms of cooking, um, for the past, uh, I guess, three or four years, um, my husband and I have been doing a CSA, so we get um, you know produce from a yeah. little farm, and that sort of forced us to be a little bit more creative with our cooking, um, which has been a fun challenge uh, when you get you know like a ton of kale, you have to figure yes. out like, what you're going to do with all of it. Um, so that's sort of been one thing. And then um, with gardening, once my husband and I bought our house and we had, you know, this big yard with that was sort of a blank slate, um, I, you know, sort of got bit by the gardening bug. And my mm -hmm. mom is a great gardener. Um, so she was really helpful in sort of like helping me get interested and in figuring out where to get started. Um, so that's been something that I've been uh, dabbling in a lot. And, um, you know, just in terms of, you know, I just enjoy like learning new things. So it's been yeah. fun to you know, to do some research and to get involved with, um, you know, other friends who have similar interests in those right. topics. Good, good. Yeah. What advice would you have for someone contemplating a career change or starting a business related to a passion of their own? Yeah, um, well, I guess I would say, um, you know, in, in some ways, like, life is too short not to do something that, you, or, you know, to, to not do something that you're passionate about. So, like, right. if you are in a, a field that isn't, you know, working for you, yes. <laughs> that um, making a change, um, you know, is something to definitely consider. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that, like, I was just really unhappy in my previous job, and that was one of the main reasons that I was um, 
you know, wanting to do something different. Mm -hmm. Um, but I guess my other thought would be to make sure that you, um, you know, have a game plan and that you really, you know, are thinking it out. And, you know, I didn't make this decision overnight. I didn't like dive into it. Mm -hmm. You know, it was a gradual transition where I did a lot of, you know, research and planning and, um, you know, really sort of set myself up for success in the beginning, Mm -hmm. um, before I ever, you know, quit my job or, (laughs) you know, moving into thing, uh, moving into book planning as a full-time job. Um, so, you know, I think there's sort of a, a good balance into like being motivated and really taking steps to make a change. Um, but then also just making sure that you've thought everything out and making sure that, um, you know, financially it's the right move and things like that. Yeah, that's good. I think for a lot of people that is a less terrifying thing to yeah. think about starting their business part time while you know, still working their full time job. Yeah. And then eventually going full time, and, and there does come a time where you ha- you have really have to make that decision and be like, okay, uh-huh. um, it's never going to be the right time. Right. I think I'm just going to have to finally bite the yeah. bullet and go full time with my passion. Yeah. But it does help to kind of get those um, get that foundation in place. Yeah. As best you can part time, and then yeah, and I think transition when you have you know when you kind of have started out um, gradually and you sort of build your confidence Mm -hmm. and you even just like little things about like getting experience talking to other people and um you know describing what you're doing as a business so like when I was you know thinking about becoming a bookbinder like I just made sure that like when I was describing it to people it was like I'm starting a business and it's um you know it's I'm not just going to be you know making these books and then not doing anything with them right you know like it, it like you know it is a career move um so I think just like the way that you think about Think about it yourself mm-hmm. and the way that you portray what you're doing to others um, is just a really good um, sort of, I don't know, step in the process of moving in the right direction. Yeah, I think um, calling yourself what you want to be yeah. helps set things in motion. You don't yeah. have to wait until you're that thing to call yourself that thing. Right. You can start calling yourself yeah. <laughs> a bookbinder or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. And I know for me... Um, I started, uh, before I did this, I did image consulting, and before I did that, I still did career advising, but I worked Uh for someone else, and uh, when I started the image consulting business, I started it part-time while working full-time in the career center at Vanderbilt, and so I kind of took a similar path to yours, Um, but for me, it was the day I went to get my uh, business license from the county clerk's Uh office, that's when I was like, okay, this is real, real. (laughs) and I have to do this now. Yeah. Now, I've got this on paper. Yeah. I, it's, it's holding me accountable. Yes. So I it's have like your to do business this. <laughs> Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Um, if someone wants to learn the art of bookbinding, what would be one thing you'd want to tell them about it? Uh, don't wait. Just start. Mm-hmm. And um, the thing that's great about bookbinding is you can make a book with things that you probably already have um, oh. in your house. So, um, you know, you can grab some, you know, scrap pieces of paper that you have sitting on your desk and look up a YouTube tutorial or mm-hmm. check out a book from the library and you can make some simple books. And if, you know, that appeals to you and you're, you know, ready to do something a little bit more involved, there are, um, you know, obviously bookbinding classes here in Nashville, but a lot of major cities have um, bookbinding classes mm-hmm. and workshops and things like that. Um, so whether you're, you know, learning from a book or you're taking a workshop, um, it's pretty easy to get started. Right. Um, so I would just recommend if you even have like the slightest inkling that like this might be something you're interested in, just like give it a try. Yeah. Will you show me some of the books you have there that yeah. you've made? Yeah. Um, so some of these books, these, uh, this book and then also this book right here um, are part of a collaboration with a local fiber artist. Mm. And um, she hand dyed and hand wove the fabric. That I used for the covers of the books. Gorgeous. Um, and then I hand bound them um, with these like uh, two color woven bindings. Yeah. I think that was one of my favorite parts of your class was doing the, the um, weaving of the, yeah. the stitching. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, so those are a few things. I've also been um, making my own paper and doing some of my own paper marbling. So some of these books have... Um, some of the materials that I've made, mm. um, and then I also make um, the leather, leather journals and leather photo albums. I love that. Thanks. So, if people are um, really loving how beautiful this is with 
they don't want to make it themselves. <laughs> <laughs> how can they, uh, where can they find your um, books and how can they yeah. purchase them? Um, so I have a website and it's linenlaidfelt.com, L-I-N-E-N-L-A-I-D-F-E-L-T. Um, and I also have an Etsy shop, um, so you can order books mm-hmm. um, on Etsy that way. And um, you know, I also have um, Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, um, which is all Linden Laid Felt is the mm-hmm. username. Um, and then here in town, um, Parnassus Books, which is an independent oh, yes. bookstore, mm-hmm. um, carries some of my leather books. And then um, the Bat Store, which is inside at the Nashville Farmer's Market, so that's some ah. of my uh, work as well. Um, and I do a handful of different um, art shows around mm-hmm. town. So, um, yeah. And if people want to take your classes, they go to your website as well. Yeah, so I have a a classes listing on my website. Mm -hmm. Um, And then most of the classes that I teach are at Watkins College, Mm -hmm. um, which is an art design and film school through their community education department. Yes, community ed, which means you don't have to be an enrolled student there. So anyone can take it. um, And they even have, like, classes for, you know, summer camps for kids and teens. And then they have adult classes for, you know, anyone, um, you know, 18 to whatever age they sign up. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Katie yeah. and Porter, for participating <laughs> in today's interview. And uh, we hope that everyone watching enjoyed it. And uh, thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you.